Hello, and welcome to The Point with your host, Jeff Spikes. You have the fortune today of jumping into a conversation that's really looking at the positives of what's happening in the world, considering some of the things we believe are, you could say, negative. They are things that people might be worried about or concerned about on really on a level of customer service and growth in companies and values that we get to choose to either maintain or that we lose. And it's really not a bad problem to have. It's certainly not an uncommon problem. And it's something that you'll learn more about here today. So you're going to learn a deeper understanding and thought process around ways to perceive and look at experiences you're having in, in today's market and how you feel cared for as a client in different situations. And one of the things that's important to make sure we gain is querying everyone that is currently working for the organization in a fast and efficient way that helps everyone have a voice and, ex and express what is working, what is not working, and what could be better. What, what do they want to change? What do they want more than anything? Do the magic wand question. For years and years and years, these are questions that great coaches and business leaders have learned to ask. What happens and what's happened here recently in, in an engagement is that you step in and you find that there are considerable values around a topic. In this case, it was people. Yet the behaviors and demonstrations weren't measuring up. Sometimes working with a company is no different than working with an individual. You might have family members that have done this or anything else where there's, a, there's an acceptable list of priorities. God, family, country, self. Or God, self, family, country. Whatever order these things go in, some people have, and you may be one of those people that has a specific order that you want to achieve in. You might have your own list of things that are truly your priorities. Having the discussion of what our priorities are and what values we are prioritizing brings up the conversation to allow us to adjust and correct based on something we might not have previously considered. A friend of mine was working with a client on gratitude lists, and this is a well-known, very uh, committed family man that provided a gratitude list for 30 days as part of, a, part of a, an assignment, for lack of better words. And imagine you were asked to give a list of five things a day that you're grateful for, and after the first 15 days, none of them can be duplicated. Well, this person who is very well-known and also very well known to be a, de a devo devoted family man. Loves his children, loves his partner, loves, is very um, involved. Had not mentioned his children or his, prime, or his spouse once on his gratitude list. Imagine yourself after 30 days of writing a gratitude list, realizing that you missed the things you're most known for valuing and appreciating. What kind of a wake-up call would that be for you? I'm here to share with you that it's not an uncommon thing. When you're compartmentalized in one part of your brain to work, to answer someone's question that you're working with on business or professional development or in church or anywhere, you might miss things that are very important to you because you're in that compartment. And you may not, but there's no shame in having listed the things that you're grateful for. But what a great realization that the thing I, that I believe, I'm, that you believe you're most grateful for is lost and not something that you captured. What a great exercise to go through to start putting more intention towards raising something back up. So how does this tie into business and customer service and other things? We're going to answer that question next. You're going to hear specific answers, and we're going to now get to the point of... of how to maintain values in a company and not lose customer service. Another thing that you have heard from before as a listener, and if you're new to this show, it's something you'll hear about as you, as you continue listening, is this idea of managing our own behavior in a vacuum, evaluating the behaviors that you have without any reasons for those behaviors other than your choice to behave that way. And there's times when you're faced with situations 
where you're on the receiving end of poor customer service, and you may have an opportunity to not have the best behaviors on the other end of a phone line or a Zoom call or something else. It might be an opportunity to behave in a way that we're not so proud of, that you're not so proud of. And I'm, sh- I'm sure it's simple to think of a time that that's happened. It's very human. Another side of this is preparing yourself to think about how we're going, how you choose to behave in the midst of situations that are less than desirable. Now, a couple of interesting things. There's statistics that say that many people today, all, and the numbers are, are very high, they're above 60% of people that are preferring direct messaging, maybe even in social media um, or text or box in customer service rather than a phone call. You could question, is that because the phone calls aren't as productive as they might have previously been? Many people on these phone calls are becoming very rule-oriented and not able to act much differently than a bot. Or have they just do not have, or possibly does the person on the customer service end of this that's performing the customer service not have the neural pathways to think through the possibilities of things they might be able to do outside of the rules or the system, which makes sense depending on where someone is on their training level. If somebody's relatively, you know, less than six months in an in position, they might not know where they can ebb and flow outside of the actual scripts and rules that they're given and still be successful and not threaten their, threaten their job. There's a lot to consider in these situations. But as leaders, as a business owner, as a, as a leader in a company, as someone that's driving results in a company or for a company or with a company, there's things to consider. In a recent engagement, we were talking about the value of people and the value of what happens, and this was specifically in uh, auditing, in supply chain and accounting, in hospital systems. And 30 years ago, that meant going into the basement and into filing cabinets and pulling out paper and going through things. And people were, were sitting at a desk in a health system as part of the team, vi- visually and physically as part of a team to go in and help look for places that money was being was not being captured and kept within the health system and it either passed to a vendor or because of improper billing or an accident in payment or a, a mistake with an invoice or a PO and an asundry of other potential issues that could happen. In this particular instance, the auditor would go in and live, basically, as, as in their work life, in that health system's office and go through paper files. One of the comments that was made here at TAG was, we used to be able to bring the whole team donuts and thank them at the end of the week for allowing us to participate and be there and help them. What happens today, right? So what, when we think about that, it's like, we can't do that anymore because of remote working and all these other things. But the question, the crossover, the lateral move is, what was being valued then, and how can we bring that value into our work life today and make that a reality? Similar situation in providing service of some type of air conditioning, refrigeration, a plumber. If you're going in, and and years ago it was, you show up to a business or to a person's home, and you meet with the person that's responsible for paying the bill, They show you what is happening. Maybe there's some diagnosis that needs to be made. You share the results of that. You perform the actual work after getting approval. You go back, you get paid, you ask if they're happy, and you have a very successful relationship. You put the money in the bank, and it's the the transaction's closed, and everything else can happen. In In this day and age, that doesn't happen. What are all of the things that are valued in that? A smile on someone's face. A welcoming, kind attitude walking into someone's home, cleanliness, putting booties on your shoes, so to speak, and wearing something that's clean walking into a, into a new customer's home or business. The presentation and what all of that says and what's being valued there. Well, when we start working in these environments where the technician is working for us for a conglomerate or service company, or it's a multi-unit restaurant or retail and you're walking in, and now there's multiple layers of people to keep happy. Again, how do we go back to maintaining positive customer service? It's understanding the values we were trying to create, the basic business principles that were being met in the simplistic in the simplicity of that work order environment of 
receiving a phone call, putting someone on the schedule and going. I had an experience where a friend was calling a plumber and said, I need, this is a successful business owner that was needing to get a plumber to his house. He's talking to someone in the phone room. I need a plumber out here and I need it to be first scheduled, first thing in the morning. And I need to know it's first thing in the morning. And it took 10 or 15 minutes to get through this situation. And it was like, great, well, schedule me as far out as you need to, to guarantee I get the 8 a.m. call. I need to make sure it's an 8 a.m. call because I, I'll plan my day around it. After another 10 or 15 minutes, the person on the other end of the phone was not capable of guaranteeing an 8 a.m. time. No matter how far out they pushed it, they said, I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to schedule anything beyond a window of 8 to noon. What do you think that service company is valuing when they do that? Maybe they have enough service calls and their plumbers are busy enough. There's a consistent need right now for more and more skilled people in these trades. And so sure, maybe they're busy enough and there's no time. But still, we get to look at the idea, what is that company valuing? And how, and how could that value be different to allow them to gain more business, which apparently they're not valuing in their behavior gaining new business. They're valuing in the behavior that's being presented to the client, and that's okay if that's what they're wanting to do. But the bet here and the guess here is that there's probably a, little, a lot of both out there in the world. But one thing for sure, when we're faced in a time when there's a lot of people saying that everything's changing and the world's coming to an end, these types of things mean opportunity exists for you anywhere you go. Because no matter how large the company is, many of them are turning to having these opportunities of not meeting the client's needs based on the rules that they're following. How many major corporations do you find when you call one of their service lines, the technician or the customer service person is basically educating you on the process or flow of the company so that you can do it for yourself? Have you caught yourself saying to someone, I don't want to learn how to do your job for you. I'm calling you so you can do your job, so you can do for me what I'm needing as a customer. We are in some ways being driven towards more do it for ourselves. Now, AI, as a firm belief, is not necessarily a call that more will be done for us. It's wise to not make the mistake of thinking, oh, AI is going to do more for us or it's going to take more away from us. What it's really going to do is it's going to give you more opportunity to do things for yourself because companies will have a platform or a way of allowing you to step into those companies and you could be one of those companies that finds a way for people to step into the service they need in a process that is handled through some type of artificial intelligence. There are industries where that clearly will not work. We will not lose the human touch in a number of different service-oriented businesses. Let's not caveat down into that. That's a whole other that's a whole nother potential conversation. Let's stay focused on this idea of what is customer service and how does that work. One of the things that you can really consider here and think about is think about all of these value-based questions. What are you valuing in the decisions you're making and how it affects your clients? And what are the decisions you could be making that would continue in a new environment to value what matters most? How, in a remote working environment, do you show appreciation that you previously would have been able to sit with and interact with, and now you're really stuck with the opportunity of having to do this online? And it's not even realistic to know who all the players are to invite them to a Teams call or a Zoom call or some type of online video conference. So you're, de so you're then dependent on whoever your main point of contact is to then have the influence and know the people, the right people to bring to the table. If it's in construction, you want people that have been working in construction for many years and at least understand what they're valuing and what they're doing so that the new shortcuts that are coming up with, with new materials or, or other things can be understood and we can ensure that the, that the integrity of what's happening is still being met.
the needed integrity of something is still being met. When you make a purchase or a reservation or you engage with someone and there's a commitment made on both ends, it's expected that that is met. The way that I've run customer service is if I make a commitment, whether it's electronic or if it's anything else that the company's going to follow through with ensuring at least doing everything they can to make sure that commitment is met. I had made a reservation for today to rent a car and I got a phone call while I was in a meeting. I couldn't pick it up. And it was about two hours prior to the pickup saying that they had run out of cars and they couldn't help me. But I was welcome to call other centers and agencies, you know, enterprise in the area and find what I could do. And I was stunned that because my experience with car rental is that they're always doing bend and over backwards. And, and enterprise is an example. Hertz is an example where if somebody is falling, is if somebody can't make something happen, they're doing everything they can to fill it. So I, I go with the assumption that they did all they could to fill. However, they are telling me that I need to, if I want to keep the reservation, then I need to start calling around. Well, I, instead of getting mad, and instead of doing all the behaviors that I wouldn't prefer to do, that don't fit the ideations around what, how I want to behave in the world, I went on an investigation and I called first the corporate hotline, the corporate number, as if I'm making a new reservation, and got a hold of somebody and started asking questions. And they absolutely could not understand the problem with what had happened. Now, I was told that because... I had taken advantage of a free day, which happened at the end of the transaction. Hey, would you like to use points for one day? I'm like, sure. It kind of pigeonholed me into a problem where now I wasn't going to be a preferred customer. That, that wasn't going to get even first choice on a car. But in those conversations, I was asking about a little bit about the values and what matters most. And there wasn't much of a connection to it other than what I learned was we don't have the ability to see the inventory of our neighbors. And what came up for me as a business leader and as someone who's in companies and in organizations talking about internal customer service, external customer service, and other things is that it's a great story and example for considering what you're valuing in the decisions you make when things change. Do you know that you're not enabling your staff to be supportive to clients' needs? And having them, having clients need to fish for themselves. And, are, and if you value a solid customer connection and customers feeling cared for, are you giving the people on the ground the opportunity to learn what verbiage to use and how to speak to clients about this, this opportunity and what's happening? Um, I did not have the ability to call around and because I was in more meetings. So... When I did have the ability, I started calling, but it was, a, it, was, it was a potentially stressful situation. Everything turned out fine, and I'm here today with, you know, the idea that I'm going to pick up a car, and that'll all work out fine. Where are the rules becoming more important than the client? What are the phone calls you're making when you do call in? Someone taught um, a seminar years ago, and um, you may have heard of this, but the idea is when you get a, someone on the other end of the phone that's meant to be in customer service and they're not having a very good day or they're, the way they're speaking it would, would suggest that they're not having a very good day, just hang up and call back and get another agent on the phone that might be in a better place to be of service. But there are situations where rules are becoming more important, appearingly so, to organizations, which again is a great opportunity to make a difference starting your own company to compete and not have those same issues and value different things. Because there's always clients and customers and people that want to be treated well. American Express has always blown me away. There's been a few calls where the person on the other end of the line wasn't necessarily having a great call. I'm not intentionally trying to plug American Express. I get nothing from it if they gain more business. They continue to surprise and delight in that they're always very helpful. And if they can't make something work that I need, they at least do their best to figure it out. And they don't hold me captive on the line the entire time if they need to go work on something. And they tend to get back to me really well. 
USAA used to be epic and has won gold star awards and all types of awards for their ability to have customer service. But as they've grown and opened up to more people, they have become much more rule oriented. And also there's standards that have changed where they are mandated to say certain things after a certain offer's made. And you just, it's, it's important that you just sit there and listen or learn to tune out because it's now a law or a standard that's been set by a committee um, that overseeing what they're doing that says this must be done. And they're being compliant to a rule that's not necessarily driven by them. Lots of these things are happening. None of them are necessarily to be judged. The idea for you is to look at these things and learn from them. And as you're implementing new rules, as you're implementing new standards and new processes to help you benefit, to help your company benefit, the people in your company to benefit, remember to consider the values that are important in the transactions. Remember to consider the values that are important to you and what you want to be communicated to your clients. And remember to integrate things that are necessary to ensure that those values are still being met as we add new technology and new framework. The more you know your client, the better you can meet their need. And the more you know what they value, the more you can meet their need. And again, it's not all in the customer service call centers because many people are now valuing direct message as a way of making customer service happen. There are some studies that say that customer satisfaction has increased with the use of bots. I have found that bots are really useful until there's something that doesn't fit the mold that I have a question with. You may have had the same thing, but now what do I do? You know, when it's not within the system. So these are things to challenge yourself with and to think deeper on. If you're responsible for a company, and if you're responsible for setting standards and trends within a company, make sure you're understanding what the experience is going to be on the other end. Take the steps to be a client in your own enterprise and feel what it feels like to be on the receiving end so you can decide if that's what you're wanting to achieve. The more aligned you are with, with positive values and the values of your client, the more you will grow. So that's the point today with Jeff Spikes. Have an epic day and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of The Point with me, Jeff Spikes. The greatest compliment you could give me is liking, loving, and sharing this episode with all your friends. So please, if you're on Spotify, iHeart, or iTunes, leave a five-star rating and review. If you're on YouTube, like and subscribe. Make sure to tag me. I love hearing from you, the listeners of this show. The links for all my social and iTunes are in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to engage with me, in anything related to my coaching, consulting, speaking, or programs, please visit jeffspikes.com for everything you would need to know to engage with me offline. And lastly, thank you for your time, your attention, and your consideration. This is The Point.